NRA proudly announces their affiliation with an indiscernible mass of bloody flesh. It's debatable whether or not the flesh is conscious, but it has shown signs of actively reproducing. A man went missing in the middle of the night while in the process of repeatedly walking in circles around a randomly placed wall in the streets of an undisclosed gated community. A discarded magazine was found in the back seat of an unregistered wrecked car in a grocery store parking lot. Its pages open to an ad for the ultimate sleeping aid. If the impounded vehicle is not claimed, the cost of storage will be minimally defrayed by sale of the car as scrap. Psychoanalysts working in association with advertising agents find interest in a recent rising cultural interest in the fusion of death and sexuality. As shown in a recent study, the three major blockbuster films of the year all share the reoccurring themes of the
is desired by others. If what we produce is desired by others, then it is esteemed as good for consumption and even essential, all desiring to partake in the communal taste of the body of work so that they may share alike in what becomes a cultic experience. I am an objective reporter of experience. Opinion has no place in the transmission of facts. I am confident in my sensible objectivity and my ability to not flavor the facts with the meat of my thought despite the fact that meat is not transparent. It is nearly impossible for a glass lens or window to be perfectly clear of any anomaly or imperfection. But they are clear enough, and we trust that what we see through them is what is there. An objective reporter or fact must strive to be like a perfect pane of glass or the perfect glass lens. Corporate manufacture of collaborative consumer consent is the news that is fit to print. Eventually, directly upon meat, the consumer brain, science skipping vulgar intermediaries of delivery. Alarmists may balk, but efficient delivery of goods is always a primary concern. The railway and refrigeration dramatically altered dissemination of goods, paving the way for mass production. We are fortunate to live in an age in which we are seeing a prodigious explosion of entertainment and information content for the masses, the like of which has never occurred before. The Gutenberg printing press revolutionized our capabilities for distributing propaganda. Ink is thought. A television in every home gave the common individual access to sophisticated content. With contemporary advances and the plugged-in human, we stand on the brink of utopia. Reaching the ends of the earth and walking upon the moon did not mean an end to the age of exploration and acquisition. We are literally creating new worlds within worlds as I speak. The adventure of colonization continues. As every parent knows, rules are the basis of freedom. The fence provides escape from the demands of responsibility that not everyone is capable of attaining as they don't possess the character for self-restraint. Character defects dilute power. The oil that rises to the top is pure. The point of view I abandon is the one that reveals the coordination of these strategies. I do not seek to obscure them with each other, but I avoid to find the... A woman reports of inexplicable appearances of disturbing, non-existent magazines and recreations of her apartment in her dreams. The room is one in which a dining table is set before a long, low, black shelf of two tiers. A window with closed Venetian blinds is above the shelf. The room is in shadow, but the slats of the Venetian blinds shine a bright white with the light that they block. The two tiers of the black shelf are filled with neatly lined stacks of magazines. Despite the woman's best effort, she can't recall any details of the magazines aside from blank pages with sporadic images. She recalled that the recurring theme of the photos was that of humanoid shapes against indiscernible fields of white. The woman was later arrested for treason for these dreams. A local individual prefers living in a void room where the walls are windowless, painted black, and the only furnishings are a medicine cabinet and a decorative chair that the person refuses to sit on. An elderly individual walks
walking their dog reports that it's spontaneously transformed to a humanoid figure on all fours with a leash once they pass a nun with ill intentions. When we are young, we don't know that we are meat. We compete to have our creations and thoughts consumed. Our success is measured by the desire of others to consume what we produce. Marketing informs the public that what we produce is desired by others. If what we produce is desired by others, then it is esteemed as good for consumption and even essential, all desiring to partake in the communal taste of the body of work so that they may share alike in what becomes a cultic experience. This week, the Western world and all of its factions were united by the horror of fake meat. If food can be simulated, one wonders if sex is next in line. What satisfaction is there to fake war? Real emotions and desires must be afforded real release. War is the only ethical remedy for overpopulation. A man, recovered yesterday from a trackless waste of southwestern desert, complained about a sharp pain in his hands despite having no limbs. We reap what we sow. Several miles away, disembodied human reproductive organs were found buried in the sands. Unverified stories entered the canon of impeachable fact. Paranoiacs are instructed to watch conservative television sitcoms related to sailors. The myth of the giant squid ceased to be as soon as it was verified as fact. Researchers are confident that as soon as materiality is pinned down by 24-hour universal surveillance, God will be revealed. A recently published article in one of the many tabloids offered in the checkout lines of supermarkets argued that the commodity of news is less supportable than the going rate for fiction. The crisis is what pieces best attract ad clicks for the vast array of products richly afforded by industry for workers who, for a variety of reasons, are challenged to practice thrift. If ads are dismemberments of culture and productivity, then we, as beasts and fur coats, walk a difficult line between necessary consumption and the needless satisfaction.
The ends justify the means, but the ends must be noble. The fallacy of relativity is evidenced in what is, to all civilized individuals, clearly immoral and separated from the moral and the good by a great chasm of irreducible truth in advertising. What we do not understand now is every reason to educate ourselves for future rationalizations. It pains me to say that comprehension of the glorious truth is not for everyone, but they are more than content with whiling away their years.
circulating blood throughout the planetary body. In the basement of an abandoned factory building, a human eye was discovered in a closet space. It's instructed to not look directly into the eye. One must use every means to seek and find the divine will. Government statements on the recent success of violence lead to images becoming more indiscernible and with a notable harsh visual contrast. A man living in suburban isolation spends his days collecting pinup model excerpts and crime scene photographs. Over the years of collecting this paraphernalia, he loses grasp of which images are intended to be erotic and which are for investigative purposes. I don't think that moral comment is much use. Brain matter traced to John F. Kennedy, assassinated in 1963, was recently discovered in a can of chili at a well-established supermarket chain. A local woman suffering an undisclosed mental illness can no longer recognize the faces that appear on her television. She still very ably distinguishes between individual animals. Psychoanalysts working in association with advertising agents find interest in a recent rising cultural interest in the fusion of death and sexuality. As shown in a recent study, the three major blockbuster films of the year all share the reoccurring themes of fur coats and unspecified deranged sexual acts being performed by trusted authority figures. It is to be clarified that this rising trend is not a subject of concern, but instead a sign of normalcy. She wanted it. Obviously. Subproject number 11. Principal researcher and location. Objective and details of death. To identify and consume in sufficient quality for experimentation the smooth ingredients in certain beans and plastics. The effort was to result in the preparation of a supply of the toxic protein tetraminus, which is the same class of substance as ricin and botulinus toxin. Approximate time span, 1953 to 1955. Significant aspects, developing and stockpiling plastics. Funding, cover mechanism, none. Other sponsors, none identified. Abnormalities in contractility were written on this identical typewriter as the moistening of Q3 to Q17. Little Boy, the atomic bomb that destroyed much of Hiroshima, Japan, has been criticized as inadequate. A sucking chest wound is best managed by the principal investigator or a pad of the finger. The human spirit is prey to the most astounding defecations. Man goes constantly in fear of herself. His erotic productivity terrifies him. The gastronome turns from the voluptuary in howls. Plethora does not know that his knowledgeable stomach aches and her own are really multitude. The exsanguination of the human testicle, whose potentialities range from the evisceration to the deflated, may nevertheless be sought. The point of view I abandon is the one that reveals the coordination of these strategies. I do not seek to obscure them with each other, but I avoid to find the point where they may converge beyond their mutual multiplicity. I do not think that man has much of a chance of diminishing the things that arouse him before he is dominating them. Not that he should hope for an egg in which there would be no cause for curiosity beyond anything else that I could possibly say. Let's <laughs> go.